Good morning, Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're continuing our study of Matthew, and we're in chapter 27 today. We're going to pick up with verse 3, and we're going to talk about the, um, the death of Judas. Um, and as we've said the last few times we've been together, the story of Judas and the story of Peter's denial, the denial and the, and the, 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 the outcome of the denier and the betrayer are juxtaposed. They're connected in the text, and they are for a reason. Peter is the one who teaches us to repent, and, and Judas is the one who teaches us how invaluable regret is if we're unwilling to repent. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse, regret, and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to that yourself. And he threw the pieces of silver into the sanctuary and departed, and went away and hung himself. The chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the temple treasury, since it is the price of blood. Their scrupulousness always just amazes me as the height of hypocrisy. The way they are, the way they strain out a gnat, but are able to gulp down a camel. They counseled together, and with the money bought the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. For this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of of the one whose price had been set by the children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. There's a lot to talk about. Um, some of it is is some just some business keeping, some housekeeping here. Um, let's begin with verse nine because this is one of the things people pop a vein over, and it's not it's it's not worthy of that at all. The quote is not from Jeremiah. The quote is from Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. So why does it say Jeremiah? Because this is a, a gospel that is written to the Jews. And because the books of prophecy gathered together were often called the book of Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was the first prophet in the prophecy scroll. And, and, so, and so they, why is why are the first five books called the books of the law when the law only appears in two of those books? Because that's what we call them. Because that's what they called them. Well, they call the book of prophecy, the books that, you know, we think of as the major and the minor prophets. They call that the book of Jeremiah. He's just saying this is from the prophecies without giving Zechariah, knowing his readers would know. He's just saying this is a fulfillment of prophecy. So stop popping a vein over that. Um, the other is that the, the account of Judas's death in the book of Acts is a little different, and it describes his head coming off and him falling down into a ravine. Um, and this is easily, this is easily harmonized. If he hung himself, committed suicide, no one would have touched the body hanging from the tree. No one would have. It would have been the ultimate defilement. And so the body would have hung there until it rotted and literally separated the head from the rest of the body by the neck, at the neck where the rope was. And what would have been done to that body to dispose of it? It had been thrown over into the Valley of Hinnom, or it may have even just pitched forward into the Valley of Hinnom, which was the public um, sewer. And that's where they put people who died, who had no place to be buried. So, now we've talked about that. Let's talk about important things. The difference between repentance and regret. Paul makes a big difference between those two things in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And he said, godly repentance is something you don't regret. But regret, remorse on, of its own, is powerless and worthless. And the difference between the two is found in the Greek words that are used in the New Testament. And I know these folks are speaking Aramaic, but the Holy Spirit inspired them in Greek. So, 
metamelomai, regret, remorse. All that means is you regret the outcome of events. You wish you could undo them now that you know how things are going to turn out, which is exactly the way it's communicated about Judas. When he saw that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was sorry at the outcome of his actions and wanted to undo them, and therefore he tried to undo them by returning the money. That's not the same thing as repentance. And even though the word repentance is not used, it's exactly what happened to Peter. Peter, repentance is metanoeo. Metamelomai, with remorse, with regret. Metanoeo, with understanding, with comprehension. Repentance is what happens when you understand what you did and why it was wrong, and that is, is that it was existentially wrong to do it. Not because of the outcome, but because it was. And that's what Peter felt. And as Paul points out in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, repentance leads to forgiveness and to power. Regret doesn't lead to anything. It's self-indulgent. And that's what Judas engaged in. He engaged in remorse, not in repentance. And we see how destructive remorse can be. Remorse can be that so destructive that you take your own life, but that's not repentance. Someone who's truly repented doesn't take their own life because they understand grace, and they have no reason to. And I'm not trying to make an absolute statement about the taking of one's own life, which can be a result of mental illness, or it can be the result of selfishness. But we know that what was going on in this man's mind at this time was not about long-standing mental health issues. It was about remorse that stopped short of repentance. And we are given a living illustration of the lines of distinction that Paul was drawing in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 in the lives and the ends of these two men, how, how their actions um, brought about results in their own lives. Peter's denial was sin in some ways ever, as bad, maybe even worse, than what Judas did. We don't know where Judas's head was. We don't know what he expected to happen. Um, he may have had good intentions. Peter's was clearly the result of fear and weakness, and he invoked the name of God in his denials, um, and yet he felt repentance, and he received grace, and he was strengthened. And Judas was never self-aware enough to take this to the level of repentance. But just allowed remorse, which is valueless, take him to this dark place where he killed himself. I don't know, I don't know whether Judas could have not done what he did. I believe in free will. I also believe in the fulfillment of prophecy. And I know that Jesus knew that he was going to do it ahead of time. But I do know this, he was not beyond the reach of grace. But grace was not given to him because he did not repent. Okay. We'll move on to Jesus' trials after this. Thank you for joining me for what is now Nine Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we'll talk again next time.